It is the sport's most celebrated individual event, the Olympic all-around final. Gold, silver, bronze on the line tonight here in Tokyo. The plot has not followed the initial script at all, and now it is a wide open affair. Simone Biles not competing tonight, but watching and cheering and still inspiring, along with their American teammates, Jordan Childs, Michaela Skinner, and Grace McCallum. So it is Jade Carey, the 21-year-old from Phoenix, Arizona, who will replace Simone Biles in this individual all-around. It's been to the World Championships before, but this, her Olympic debut here in Tokyo, and the standings and qualification, you can see she earned her way. She would have been here in the individual all-around had there not been that two-per-country Warm up underway. They will start on vault. The standings in the qualification, not that they carry over, but just to give you an idea, I mean, she was in the top 10. So if there weren't that two per country rule, Jade Carey would be in this individual all around final. Simone, of course, qualified number one. Rebecca Andrade, one of the top names right behind, and Suni Lee, the three spot, but the second best in terms of who is competing tonight. So, guys, Nasty and Tim, your Olympic champs. You won this particular event back in 2008. What's she going through right now? Well, you know, she's always been considered an event specialist. She is so spectacular on vault and floor, but competing here in the all-around finals is very special for her. I talked to her yesterday, and she said, this is for me. I have said it all along that I just want to prove to myself that I can do all-around, and I've already done that. Yeah, you know, I mean, the pandemic and the postponement of the Olympic Games over a year in time has benefited Jade immensely. She was a specialist in the past, but with the extra time, she has become unbelievable on the uneven bars and her balance beam. It's been a remarkable improvement in her gymnastics. So she will start on vault, and so will Suni Lee. Here you go with the warm-up for the 18-year-old. St. Paul, Minnesota, and a two-time U.S. all-around silver medalist. Yeah, and she has really just peaked at the right time. We talk about that really over and over. The Olympic Games, it is the pinnacle of an athlete's career. Not just making it here, but when you are as strong as she is in the all-around competition, you want to win. You don't want to just come out here and compete in the second event for her, the uneven bars. That is going to be key. But she faltered a little bit in the 2019 World Championships in the all-around, but in qualifying, she was second. Guess who? To Simone Biles. She's been in this situation. She can deal with the pressure. I think she's one of the best competitors I've ever seen. She doesn't get phased by anything, and she's really tremendous on all four events. Jade Carey does have the advantage of having her dad here with her. He is her coach. She'll be out there with him every step of the way. And we start on vault with Suni Lee. Definitely one of the favorites for the gold medal tonight. But this is where she really needs to jump out, and she can be much better on vault than we've seen her at the Olympic Games thus far. Has been battling with an ankle injury for about two years. Wow. And that was probably the best fault that I have ever seen her do. That was really good. <laughs> really explosive. She had a much better body position coming into the floor and pretty much a darn near stuck landing. So take a look. She'll stretch back onto the table and get that block. Legs are together. Just a little bit of a feet separation when she lands, and it, yeah, it was it was pretty much a stick. Just uh, almost looked like the mat slid back a little bit. And it's important to remember the top four athletes are all within three tenths of each other, so landings tonight are really important. One of six kids in the family and back in the Twin Cities, Oakdale, Minnesota. That's where. Uh, they're gathering tonight to watch Suni Lee. She's talked about it all throughout the last couple of years that we've watched her at the national level, the World Championships, and now the Olympics. How important her family, but he's a family is important. But I mean, they've been with her. They've inspired her. Her dad, John, always with those words before she comes out to compete. 
The number now, execution, 9.2 out of a perfect 10. You get the difficulty plus the execution, no penalties there, and the score, 14.6. Best one she's had at the Come Olympic on. Games. That's what you want to do. So now the 22-year-old from Brazil, Rebecca Andrade, what she has been through. She competed in Rio at home, but she has had three ACL surgeries in the last four years, the last one in 2019. This vault is spectacular. The same vault we'll see from Jade Carey. Oh, man. That was huge. <laughs> That was a goosebump moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, made 13. I Talk about momentum coming in, too. The Pan American Championship. She won the all around gold there. So, look, she does a half on onto the table. Completely open stretch body position. Wow. Amazing. Just such amazing technique as well. Watch how there's no twisting off the table at all. Shows that laid out front flip. That's what you want to do. A lot of gymnasts try to twist a little bit too early or they can't help not twisting too early and it takes away their height. Along the way, we've been giving you the symbols just to help out if you're new to gymnastics. Next to the number, if it's in green, it's excellent. Yellow is safe. Red, you want to avoid below average and all of that based on recent major international meets now the number yeah that number better be in green 15.3 that is a big opening number for rebecca andrade so she leads the way on vault still to come as we continue jade carey opens things up back in tokyo rotation one underway of four in all four apparatus Jade Carey set to go on vault. She is very good here. She's very good on floor. Overall now in the all around, the replacement for Simone Biles tonight. She said her parents owned a gym when she was little, so she kind of was born there. And she said, I started bouncing on the trampoline before I could walk. Her dad, Brian, her coach. And, and you know that well. I want to pick your brain throughout the evening. Your dad was there in Beijing. There's the family watching her mom, Danielle, her significant other, Charlie, brother, sister, uh, a watch party in Orlando. You know, it's has to be so difficult for some of these athletes, for their families not to be here. But as you mentioned, having her dad right here on the floor with her is, is just a level of security and safety and comfort that nobody else feels on the floor tonight. She says her dad has her back always and is an unbreakable bond. Same fault we saw from Andre G. Really nice, not quite as tight in form and the, the rebound wasn't as great start. as Rebecca's, start. but it's a very good start. So obviously competing against each other here in the individual competition, but still just the most supportive teammates on the competition floor, off the competition floor to experience something like this together. They're never going to forget this moment. And see right there on the table, just little leg separation. Pretty good on the landing, though. The judge is really looking to make sure you don't pike down, bend in your hips on the landing. So half turn onto the board, then another one onto the table. Rebounds. That's a laid out front flip with one and a half twists or a Rudy, as we call it in gymnastics lingo. World Team Champion 2019 and the silver medal on vault at the World Championships. It's a 15.2. That is stratosphere. Wow. And now the 21 year old from Belgium. In fact, she has been the face of Belgian gymnastics for the past several seasons. Nina Derweil. All right, good vault for her, a good start. This is not one of her better events. When she goes to the uneven bars next, you won't believe how phenomenal she is. This vault has a much lower degree of difficulty or maximum starting score than we just saw from Jade Carey. But look, her knees are already bending a little bit. And that hop forward, and see those lines? If your feet go over the line, 
It's a deduction on the line. It's in inbounds. Belgium, by the way, has not won an Olympic gymnastics medal since 1920. They've never won gold. The number for Durwile, 13.9. Very good start for the American Suni Lee. Back on vault, the 16-year-old young teenager in the Russian Olympic Committee, Vladislava Arazova. Double twisting Yurchenko here. Oh boy, we've seen some great vaults. And like I said, remember, the top four are all within three tenths of a point. So every tenth counts and sticking those landings is really critical. Vault has a value maximum score of 15.4. What we saw Rebecca Andrade and Jade Carey do, that's actually worth a 16.0. Little bit of crossed feet at the very end. Almost, she actually landed with her feet crossed, which can be a little dangerous, but it was okay there. She qualified number five, so she was in the top five. 5.4 5 difficulty, 9.1 execution, 14.5, the number for Arazova. Next up, it's Angelina Melnikovna from the Russian Olympic Committee, and she also qualified in the top five. She was number four coming in, certainly one of the top names, and again, emboldened by that team gold medal. Oh, and what a night it was for them. She closed the entire competition in the anchor position on the floor exercise and in really right as she landed emotions so many emotions poured out they of course i'm waiting for the final score to come up and the celebration the men and the women gold medalist here at the olympics Everybody is on their A game tonight. Not a stick, but that was definitely just a tenth of a point slide. If it's a meter or more, it's three tenths. If it's less than a meter, only one tenth of a port on the landing. As has been mentioned, they were inspired by the Russian men winning the title. And then they did it themselves, and they're confident that there are more medals to come after such a successful games thus far. Turns just a little early off of the table, which causes a little bit of that leg separation in the air. Just gorgeous all across the board, every single event that we will see. Just a stunning gymnast. She competed in Rio. She was the youngest on the team at the age of 16 and did not qualify for the all around or individual finals, but is a big part of the picture here. 14.6. 3-3 for Melnikova. While all of that was taking place over on uneven bars, Tang Shijing, who won the silver medal the last time the World Championships came around. And in the team finals, China just had an abysmal performance. Everybody had them pegged for the bronze medal. They ended up in seventh. So many falls. Not on this one, though. 14.233 for the 18-year-old who expects to be there in the mix all night long. So rotation one in the books. That's how we stand on Draje better than anybody. 15.3. Jade Carey right behind Suni Lee. They'll head to uneven bars next. Just a heads up. You don't want to miss this. She is really good. Back with rotation number two in Suni Lee. This is where she could take hold of the event tonight. She was second best overall in qualifying on uneven bars. It'll be Rebecca Andrade, though, to kick it off in this rotation, in that group. Boy, what a thrill it must have been back in 2016 to be back at home. Leads right now 15.3 over Jade Carey, but somewhat skewed sometimes the numbers because where you start, certain events have higher numbers, and you're better individually on certain events so rotation number two and also guys how exhilarating to be there at home in front of the home crowd back in rio and it was loud <laughs> really really loud she ended up 11th in the all around but in qualifying she was all the way near the top in the fourth position 
So the experience of having competed in an Olympics and now coming in into this individual all around as the person who qualified right behind Simone Biles, top qualifier actually competing tonight, one of the favorites. Wow, a huge connection right there. Beautiful handstand. Gorgeous form. Just every single thing glued a little short on that handstand, but her legs and toes glued together. Just astounding, and remember, Terry, you pointed it out. Three different ACL tears from 2015 to 19. I mean, that is incredible to keep coming back and, and 10, 11 months off at a time. Here in Tokyo, she would be the first Brazilian woman to win an Olympic gymnastics medal of any kind. And she has had the potential for years. And just because of those injuries, it has been so frustrating for her, but this combination right here from the high bar to the low bar and what makes it so hard is she goes right back up to the high bar right here just beautiful it, yeah she floats it's amazing does this dismount in combination gives her a little bit more difficulty higher maximum score but she doesn't just stick it's like with authority and no doubt three times she tore that right ACL yeah. And Rebecca said about her injuries, I, I'm not thankful I got injured, but it was essential for me to grow up. 14, 6, 6, 6, the number for uneven bars. So it's Jade Carey coming up next, the one gymnast who's got a family member, not only here in Tokyo, but out there with her tonight. It's a thing of beauty, a sight to behold. this for so long and just so unreal a congratulatory hug from coach and dad he's been coaching me ever since i was a little kid we've been dreaming of this i'm really honored to represent my country and to be able to share that with him it means everything to me it's a thing of beauty just massive tumbling from start to finish Wow. wow, what an Olympic performance. There you go, Jade. And that relationship taken right out on the floor. Competition here in Tokyo. You, you know what it's like to have your dad out there in the individual all-around final with you. Think back to the advantage that was, or, or maybe words of wisdom he had for you. Yeah, you know, the thing that he always told me was, that we've worked so hard and you really don't need to worry in this moment. He also encouraged me to not worry about the scores, not worry about the placement, just to go out there, concentrate, do your job, and you're going to get what you deserve. I'm sure similar things being said tonight with Brian and Jake Carey. And also, Tim, it's got to be just a look, a presence being there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it just, it, it kind of just radiates, you know? It's, it's father and daughter. And, uh, you know, they, he has been on this Olympic journey as well, you know? And uh, he has had to make the same commitments, tons and tons of sacrifices to get his daughter to this point. And uh, it, I'm sure it's been an unbelievable ride for him. And mom as well, not here, but watching in Orlando. And a watch party. After a final nod from dad, Jade Carey now on uneven bars. She said she doesn't consider bars a weak event anymore. Neither do I. Big combination. She was supposed to connect it to the low bar right here. So it's not going to be deduction. She just is going to lose in the difficulty side of the score. Very nice. A hard wash from the high bar down to the low. Little bit passed on that handstand. That's typical for her. 
Full twisting double. Great body position. She had a couple of falls on that first release skill in the 30-second touch right before she was competing. She has to be far enough away so she can connect it into that ginger. So she needs to be far away so she's got enough swing to create the next release. And that just wasn't enough for her. You know, when you are a little too far from the bar and warm up two times in a row, you kind of tend to obviously fix that mistake. So she was a little closer, more than likely for that reason. And here's that dismount. Full twisting, double back. Watch her spot the ground with her eyes. <laughs> Wow, what a, what, a, what a start for Jade. Two events down, two to go. Wasn't even supposed to compete here in the all-around finals. So take you back to warm-ups and perhaps a problem or two here. Initially, you thought maybe this is planned, but no. Well, I know Jade likes to get the feeling of doing it really far from the bar. And I've seen her many times do that in warm-ups but I've not seen her do it two times in a row like that. And, and just so you guys at home know, these mats look pretty soft. They're not really that soft. They do look, <laughs> they, they don't sound soft, but they do look soft. Yeah. And obviously they don't feel <laughs> No, like they definitely soft. don't. But that is the first thing that you were taught as a gymnast, exactly how to fall. And it was just like that, you fall completely flat. So the number now for Jade, 13.5. It's in red there, so not where you want to be. And the nod meeting something else from her father right now as we take you to break. Simone and teammates watching tonight, cheering on Suni Lee and Jade Carey as of this moment as this competition is taking place. She has not announced whether or not she'll compete in the event finals next week. No, she's got the family back home and all the kids to Spring Texas at the gym World Champion Center. They kept the party going there. <laughs> I'll play. Hey, hi, guys. Let's hear you. Let's hear you. There you go. <laughs> Rotation two continues and on uneven bars, Nina Durwell in eighth place after the opening rotation. She loves this event, though. The two-time reigning world champ on uneven bars. She is spectacular here as well. Huge air on this release. And then it gets really complicated. She's going to do another release and then turn at the last second and connect down to the low bar and back up again. This is such an efficient routine. Has such a beautiful look to her on the uneven bars because of her height. Her lines are so long. She's a lot taller than a lot of the other competitors here, and sometimes that can make it more challenging on this event specifically. You're not allowed to change the distance between the two bars, which makes it a lot harder. Every single time you pass the bar, you're closer and more capable of hitting the low bar every time. She says she has a symbiotic relationship with the uneven bars. I like to think I can communicate and have a relationship with them. The bars speak to me and tell me when to let go and when to regrasp. Pretty cool. By the way, you might recognize Nina Durwal. Instagram post went viral with Novak Djokovic in the Olympic Village doing the splits. <laughs> Stretching. <Pretty cool. laughs> I know. 15.266, the number for Durwal. It's that difficulty score. That 6.7 right there is what really sets her apart from the other competitors on this event. We believe in a world where every breath is clean. Toyota, start your impossible. Next up, teenager, 16-year-old, Vladislava Arazova from the Russian Olympic Committee. Beautiful routine here. She actually grew three inches last year, which 
is very challenging as a gymnast. It throws your timing off tremendously. But thus far, perfect timing. Look at she just floats on that front flip. That's a little low, though. Every handstand has to go directly vertical. Great landing. That's a stick. That is a stick. Fifth place after the opening rotation. She's very steady across all of her events. Whereas Suni Lee and Nina Durwil have a huge event on the uneven bars. She just chips away on every event. Here's that dismount. So here in the women's competition, a lot more stuck landings just like that. But in the team final, she actually came off of the balance beam, and that's going to be coming up next for her. So big test. She was second on uneven bars at the European Championships. Number here, 8.566 for execution, 14.866 overall. And still to come, Suni Lee, a big part of the competition tonight. This next routine on uneven bars. Closed captioning and video description is brought to you by Toyota. Start your impossible. Third place after the opening rotation. One of the names in there for the gold medal time in the mix. Angelina Melnikova. And she doesn't just do a similar routine to Yorozova. She does the exact same routine. All the same skills in the same exact order. Crazy. It's a very, like I said earlier, efficient routine. Let's see if she can go more vertical here. A little bit higher than her teammate. Ah, but no stick. Definitely the leader of that team experience-wise as we look at some of the moments from this routine. So here's that dismount. Again, same exact dismount that we have seen from multiple of the athletes. Full twisting double back. Almost like she doesn't quite bend her knees enough on that landing. That's what really helps you balance out the landings. So the difficulty execution total 14-9 in green for Melnikova. A very big score. Great bars. Coming up next, it's Suni e. Lee. Important part of tonight for her. For more on Suni e and how she got here, her path. Here's Andrea Joyce. Terry, the past few years, the road to Tokyo has been very difficult and emotional for Suni Lee and her family. Her dad, John, who has been a constant by her side throughout her entire career, had a bad accident just a couple of days before the 2019 U.S. Nationals. John was paralyzed from the waist down after falling from a ladder when he was in the backyard of a friend's house uh, helping him out. Now, the Lees are part of a close-knit Hmong community, an ethnic minority with roots in Southeast Asia. More than 66,000 Hmong live in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, and many of them came together to help the Lees make their home handicap accessible and with fundraising to help with Suni's expenses. So tonight is a celebration for that community. John told me that they had to move the watch party to a much bigger location and event space because so many people wanted to celebrate this night. And while John always tells Suni to have fun and compete for herself, it is clear her Olympic experience extends well beyond this arena. We'll be back with Suni Lee on the uneven bars when we return. Before break, you just heard the emotional family story with Suni Lee. If you want to see the steps to making the Olympic team, terrific all access look. Golden, the journey of USA's elite gymnast, a six episode docuseries featuring Suni and four other top Americans. It's available now on Peacock. Back to Suni Lee competing in the all around as we head back to Terry Gant. Back now at the moment maybe for Suni e. Lee because she entered this rotation about seven tenths of a point behind Rebecca Andrade. And her routine now, you look at the difficulty, it's five tenths more difficult than Rebecca's. So this is the time to go. Yeah, and she can absolutely make that up both in the difficulty and the execution. 
She has done two different versions of her routine. Day one, qualifying, she did a 6.6 .6 difficulty routine. In the team final, stratospheric 6.8, the highest of anyone in the Olympic Games on this event. Scored a 15.4. And if she's able to pull that off, it is just release after release after release. This is it. Her entire performance in the all-around rests on this routine. Whatever she does on this event will define her here tonight. Always does that. Puts her hand on her stomach to calm herself a little bit. Trickiest combination. Comes right after this. Here, got it. Gorgeous. Another combination coming up here, down to the low bar, and right back up to the high bar. A little bit of a foreshadowing of the uneven bar final that she'll be up against Nina Derweil. Say that one goes to SUNY. Got it done. They know it too. <laughs> that is, and she knew it too, starting that routine. Her time to say, all right, I'm either, either going to be in this to the end or I am not, and took full advantage. Look at that height that she got on that first skill. And what makes her so incredible on this event, every single skill is connected back to back to back. If you are a little bit off on one skill, it goes right into the next skill, the next skill, the next skill. You have to be so technically precise. Look at this landing. Precision. Standing O, Jordan Childs, <laughs> and the ovation from her teammates. I think that was better than she did in, in team finals. They know how important that routine just was. And there is the 15.3 for SUNY Lee. Biggest number tonight. Yep. <laughs> Over on balance beam, this taking place for the 18-year-old from China, Tong Shi Jing. This is disastrous for her. You can't fall in the all-around finals, only four events. China has had a really, really rough Olympic Games thus far. 13066 the number, but we are through two rotations. Big effort on the uneven bars from Suni Lee. Now within seven one hundredths of a point of the lead of Rebecca Andrade as we continue halfway through here in Tokyo. Life can surprise you. It can humble you. It can test you. It can inspire you. They didn't expect this to be the story. But that doesn't mean they weren't ready for the spotlight. They've worked for this. They've dreamed about this. They belong here. So don't be surprised as the story takes flight from here in the women's all around in Tokyo. When they dreamed, they dreamed of this night and whether they expected to have this opportunity or not, Jade Carey and Suni Lee have a chance to join a list that includes names like Mary Lou Retton, Carly Patterson, Nastia Lukin, Gabby Douglas and Simone Biles. So after two rotations, it's Rebecca Andrade with the lead, but it's less than a tenth of a point over Suni Lee. Jade Carey right now in sixth. Guys, we just saw Suni Lee on uneven bars. Take me into what makes her so good. 
Well, a whole bunch of things, and it starts right at the beginning of the routine, this first release move. Take a look at the height that she gets when she is right on top of the bar in the body position. Hips are completely stretched open. So impressive. Nobody in the world does it like this. And then from that huge air, she's got a transition down to the low bar, and she's gonna do a back laid out somersault with a full twist. Look at the height, and now, her goal is to see that bar as soon as she can. Her eyes are glued on it. Grab the bar. She has to have good support on the bar because it's not over. She's got to be able to get her toes back to the bar. And you're watching this in super slow motion. This all happens in the blink of an eye. Now look right here. She has to pass her feet above the low bar so she doesn't hit her feet on the bar in order to do this release move. Very difficult. Again, not many gymnasts do it going towards the low bar. And look at her eyes. Just spotting the bar the entire time as soon as she lets go. Just absolute precision. And what does a gymnast need? Every single one of them. You gotta get the speed. You need power, cause you gotta fly high. And then, you gotta stick the landing. Gymnastics 101, baby. So an event that Suni expected to make a move, and she has done so here in the all-around tonight. So over to balance beam now. And Jade Carey, with her Dan Bryan out there, getting set midway through here. About 1.2 points behind in terms of the top spot. We saw that final moment before she mounted the balance beam. Sometimes no words are needed. Just a simple look in the eye and a head nod from your dad to let you know it's going to be okay. in a row. Can't spring. Two layout step outs. Oh. Uh, and that's a shame. Hmm. A fall is a full point in deduction. And that's really going to derail any metal chance for her in the all around, I would say. She had such a great balance beam routine in qualifications. And I was shocked, I think you were too, Nastia, at the score that she was eventually given. She was a little shocked as well. Really, it was, it was the difficulty and the execution. A few of her dance elements, the switch leaps, maybe not full 180 degree split, but big dismount right here. And that was a great recovery from Jade. Mm. But you know it in the moment as an athlete. And sometimes teammates and dad are there to console. You know what, guys? You remember the good, you remember the bad, you remember the important. This moment right now is one both of them will always remember. for the rest of their lives. Not only the night, but, you know, that, that adversity. And, and again, it's, it's not always about the scores, the placements, the medals. It's, it's about the experiences. And especially being able to experience this with her dad right next to her. But look right there, just oh. totally off. A lot of times, it, you, if we're looking at a view like this, you, you can't even really see it, but right away she is just drifting to the left side of your screen instantly on that second layout. Oh. So Suni, again, it's an individual competition, but their teammates, their sisters, they are going to support and cheer each other on throughout the whole thing. Now looking up at the number 
Well, that is 11 5 3 3. And in terms of teammates, maybe even closer in these games than any other because they're in a hotel. They've been around each other. They're not in the Olympic Village. You're not allowed to go anywhere else. Well, and you don't have anybody else. You know, right. your families aren't here to support you. Having gone through this entire thing, the, the Olympics being postponed for an entire year, they have gone through something that nobody else will understand. And the look of disappointment for Jade Carey with Suni Lee still to come. It'll be two Russians back to back here in the second to last rotation of the evening. Vladislava Irazova will be first. Magdalena Melnikova will be next. And we'll take you back to that team final. It's that point. Second to last rotation on beam. Critical part of the night. U.S. trying to mount a comeback. The Russians had the lead. And really, she was pretty shaky throughout the entire routine. Huge mistake right there, a full point, as we mentioned, and it just kept getting worse for the Russian team. Another fall. Tim, it looked like the door was opening for the U.S. It absolutely did. And then Victoria Lestunova was the last to go for the Russian Olympic Committee and, and kind of saved a little bit, came back with a great routine, and then the final rotation is when they sealed it. But right now, you would hope not memories of the last <laughs> balance beam routine. Yeah, absolutely. She was good in qualification, scored a 14.0. And she's lovely on the event. The good thing for her and for Angelina Melnikova is that that memory got erased by winning an Olympic team gold medal, probably. I would say. Yes. All right, here we go. First of two. Big mount. She'll do a round off onto the board. Back layout, step out. Awesome. This is where she came off in the team final. Two back handsprings into a back layout. Perfect today. Not this time. into the dismount, round up, back handspring, two and a half, just a small hop on the landing. Very strong routine. She was in fourth after the second rotation, right behind Melnikova, and the last time a woman from Russia won the all-around, it was 1988, it has been a while. So take your cell phone, put it in the middle of the living room floor, and envision yourself doing this, a round up back layout, step out on it. Did you think about it? What did that feel like? So envision it, don't actually do it. No, don't do it. Here's that dismount. So she does a round off back handspring into a two and a half twist. Little, her legs are a little bit crossed in the air. Hop to the side. Difficulty 5-9, 8.3 for execution. Got a smile on her face, 14.2, it's in green. So much better than the team final for Arazova. And she was about six tenths of a point off the lead after two rotations. Right on to a Russian teammate, Angelina Melnikova. This is a great lead. Boy, she was supposed to connect that into another one. Good decision, though. Her shoulders were very crooked. That's where she struggled. Team final. So important not to hold back on the balance beam, especially when you're nervous. So far, she seems to be doing a 
exactly what you're supposed to do. Be aggressive. This is cool. Full twisting back handspring. That kind of stuff was popular a number of years ago, but she still does it, which is great. This is impressive because she started off very nice, not perfect, and she was able to instantly get it back together. Does this very powerful double pike. Is one important routine too. The weakest of the four for her. She made it to the vault on even bars floor individual finals, but an outstanding effort. And she's got one rotation left. She was in the top three. We'll get her number and still to come, Suni Lee. Back with the number four, Angelina Melnikova, uh, 13 7. May have lost some ground here. Got that one rotation left and not as high as she had hoped. Now, Suni Lee, who was less than a tenth of a point off the lead after two rotations. That's where she is right now. And two rotations left. A critical balance beam routine coming up as family and friends. John and Yang, your parents watching there right in the middle. Needed a new venue, a bigger venue. So many people wanted to attend and glued on this routine. And this is a huge moment for her. Big test, the uneven bars. Obviously, was so key for her to make the best bar team that she could in order to catch back up to the rest of the field because her vaulting score and difficulty is a little bit lower than the rest of the field. But all she needs to do here is stay on that balance beam. I would say this is maybe her second best event. She's astounding on unevens, as you mentioned, Nastia, and very, very good here. Front row, Michaela Skinner, Simone Biles, Jordan Childs, Grace McCallum. And we've heard about all the challenges she's had in her life outside of the gym and in the gym. Simone Biles says, I admire her ability to take anything thrown at her. And she certainly has. And there has been a lot thrown, and she has dealt with every single bit of it. We'll run through your routine right now. Absolutely, you're visualizing. You're trying to think of every little correction that a coach has ever told you on every scale, or at least that's what I did. And you think, why are they taking so long? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And thousands of miles away, they hold their breath for the next couple of minutes. Off with the tricky turn com combination, triple turn. Whoa. Oh. Now she's going to do the same. Oh, normally she does a second one there. Decided not to do it. Series she fell on this in warm ups. That was good, though. Here we go just the dismount, two back handsprings into a double twist. There you go. You know, definitely not her best routine here in Tokyo, but. She made it through. She's gonna take a deep breath and be glad that one's over. Really had to fight for that, didn't she? Oh, absolutely. 
There were a number of places where it was almost all over. So right at the start, this is called a wolf turn, and she spins around three times, has a high value. That's why you see a lot of gymnasts do it, and it is much trickier to do than it looks. She's a little shy of making it all the way around her. I'm not sure, maybe she wasn't. Left foot is almost off of the beam. And here's that dismount. So two back handsprings. And when you connect two back handsprings into the dismount, makes it a lot more challenging. You have to stay straight. But you can also get some more power out of that. Teammates happy. And of course, family is excited that that routine is over as well. It'll be interesting to see the start value that they give her here because she mm -hmm. did leave out that second turn at the beginning. Scored a 14.2 in qualifying on this event. See how that number compares, 13.833. How about the difficulty? Yeah, one-tenth lower than she had in the qualifying and the team competition because she left out that extra turn. That's 7.7 .7 out of a perfect 10 for execution. Giving up some ground in terms of what the number expected to be was. All right, here is Rebecca Andrade, who has led throughout the evening from Brazil. And in some ways, she has a little bit of an advantage. She has only had one all-around competition to get here. The Americans, the Russians, the Chinese that we're seeing, anybody that was in team finals, they've done another full day of competition. They're a little bit possibly more fatigued. Brazil does not have a team that has competed here in that final. Yeah, they were so close to qualifying at the World Championships in 2019. Fell a little bit shy. She was injured there, so wasn't part of that team. Yeah, they'd have made it if she had been healthy at that point in time. from South America on the women's all-around podium. No, Just that's one that's left, and it'll be on floor exercise. And she had to wait until the bitter end to punch her ticket to Tokyo. She competed at the Pan American Championships. Only needs 13.767, but not going to get there. 13.566, that is not enough. She's in, forget first place, she's in third, guys. You know, I, I don't know about these scores, both on the uneven bars and here on the balance beam. Those execution scores, in my opinion, were just a little too low wow. for Rebecca. And you are looking at the current leader, Suni Lee. She's done three rotations. She may be one rotation away from capturing the gold medal tonight in Tokyo. Three rotations in, one remains here in the sport's most celebrated individual event, the Olympic all-around final, and it could be a teenager from the Twin Cities who captures Olympic gold. Suni Lee leads the way, and it's Rebecca Andrade now in second. An inquiry was made about her balance beam routine, and the judges took a look added a tenth of a point. She's in second. Vladislava Arazova rounds out the top three just ahead of her Russian teammate, Angelina Melnikova. And the top contenders finish up on floor exercise. The first one to go, Vladislava Arazova from the Russian Olympic Committee, less than two tenths of a point off the lead. 
On her social media, she posted recently, all dreams come true if you believe in them. gold medal just a few days ago had a great performance here and really it was about that mental recovery had the mistake on the balance beam in the team final showed she can move on from that have a great competition here every single landing too she was just tim as you mentioned earlier in the competition so steady so consistent throughout tim you mentioned the social media post you wonder coming in when she first came here as a 16-year-old to Tokyo, whether or not those dreams actually included having a chance to win the all-around gold in the last event. Well, she probably had those dreams, Terry, but then she woke up. <laughs> right. You know, you got to remember, and we haven't said this very much, the person that was supposed to not just win this but dominate it is not competing on the floor tonight, Simone Biles. 13.4, the number for Vladislava Orozova. And now she waits, watches, and hopes. Four gymnasts still left to go, including three in the medal mix. Suni Lee is one of them, going for gold in Tokyo. Back in Tokyo, under the watchful eyes of Simone Biles in the front row. The final rotation out on floor exercise. Up next, in fourth, half a point out of the lead, Angelina Melnikova. And a bit of a struggle on this in the warm ups. Double layout with a full twist. Not here. She would need 13.733 to take the lead, and obviously significant because if she does, 
she would earn a medal. Mel Nikova get the number in a moment and still to come Suni Lee for gold. Looking intently up at the board, Angelina Melnikova, 13.966. She takes the lead, and that means she is guaranteed a medal here in Tokyo. Before she came, Suni Lee said her goals here to compete in the all-around final, get second place, and then win a bar's gold. <laughs> that answer for obvious reasons, Simone Biles, not in this all-around final, watching from the front row with American teammates. And Suni's family, friends, so many of them back home, the Twin Cities, watching. And it comes down to this, the last event and what she does on floor exercise, trying to become the fifth straight American gymnast to win this gold medal. And she had to wait forever before that routine on balance beam and now made to wait again on floor. You're part of that list, Nastia, the Olympic all-around gold. And I mentioned those names worth repeating. Mary Lou Retton, Carly Patterson, you, Gabby Douglas, Simone Biles. Will the name Sudi Lee be added to that list? She absolutely has a chance to add herself to that list. She needs to stay on her feet and also stay in bounds. She was competing a three tumbling pass routine for most of the year, has upgraded it to four passes. She's the reigning world silver medalist on this event, so she can tumble, that's for sure. She's got two very major passes. First one is a double twisting double. And the second pass, a double layout. It's so close at the top after three rotations. She needs 13, 4, 6, 6 with this effort now. Better than that number. She's going to remember no matter what the score is here. Of course, looking back on her competition right now, hoping, crossing her fingers, this that is, it is enough for an individual Olympic medal. This is interesting, though. She competed a four-pass routine in the other competitions. I believe she only did three there. Did a double back for her last pass. Mel Nikova, the leader right now. Rebecca Andrade still to come. Had that look of concern as I read as she left the floor. Well, the landings were really good. She had one turn where she kind of fell out of it early, I thought, but the best landings she's done at the Olympic Games, and she had a big deduction on that dismount the fourth pass she was doing the double back in qualifications 
She left that one turn off on the balance beam. She lost a tenth there in the start value. Tumbling pass here. 13.466, better than that, is what she needs to take the lead. Here it comes, 13.7, Suni Lee is the leader in the women's all around. <laughs> Rebecca Andrade still to come. Melnikova goes into second place. Jade Carey still to come, but she's down in 12th place going into the rotation. There is the current leader. Wow. It is Suni Lee who's atop the standings right now. And it comes down to this. One last rotation. One last routine for the 22-year-old from Brazil, Rebecca Andrade. 90 seconds from the gold medal. This is going to be the most important routine of her entire career. In qualification, her landings were picture perfect. In qualification, she took a big step. That was a three-tenth step plus the one-tenth for going out of bounds. Wow. face there obviously such an incredible performance that she had here tonight but she is thinking back on those two tumbling passes those two steps out of bounds yeah the first and the last pass everything else was was absolutely gorgeous she scored a 14.066 in the qualifying but like i said her landings were impeccable all of them that helpless feeling when it, it's now done. You know you had mistakes. You may or may not know the number that needs to pop up there. It doesn't matter. The placement will. And all you can do is sit and watch. She was too hurt last year to even be able to compete in the Olympics if they were held on time. And she thought she might never have this chance again. But through it all, she climbed and climbed. And today, she finally stands go, on top of a mountain regardless of the final result here. Yeah, for her, it is a story of perseverance to come back after those major surgeries. And Brazil has never had an Olympic medal in women's gymnastics. See in a moment if that changes. 13.666. And it's Sudi Lee who's in the top spot. She is going to win the Olympic all-around gold medal. Welcome to the most exclusive gymnastics club, Suni. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. It's an 18-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota, who joins that exclusive list of champions.
And Rebecca Andrade will stand on the podium at the Olympics. Tears of joy for Team Brazil as well. They have never won an Olympic medal in women's gymnastics. <laughs> He's a little happy. <laughs> All of this taking place as Jade Carey is about to close it out on floor. Too far back, starting the last rotation to realistically hope to make it to the podium. Step out of bounds. Only one tenth of a point. And a hug from Dad. And another look at that moment when she realizes she is the Olympic champion. And that every dream she had as a young girl has come true, and all the hard work has paid off. And they realize it too. And all the sacrifice that your family went through for you to get here. And they're going to enjoy it with you, even though they're thousands of miles away. Suni e. Lee, the fifth straight American gymnast to win the women's all-around gold medal here in Tokyo. Back in Tokyo as the celebrations and the hugs continue for the now Olympic champion. It is Suni e. Lee who captures the gold medal here at the Olympics. Rebecca Andrade of Brazil, the silver, and Angelina Melnikova of the Russian Olympic Committee, the bronze medal. Jade Carey ends up in eighth. Suni e. Lee has made her way over to speak with Andrea. Minnesota, say hello to your Olympic gold medalist. I miss you guys. Thank you for watching. You had every <laughs> you had everyone there in tears. Your family's about 3,600 miles away. Yeah. But how much did you feel their presence out there tonight? Well, I knew they were watching, and I knew I just wanted to go out there and do my best. I didn't think I would come out on top, but that's always the goal. I mean, it's just been so crazy. I'm so happy that my family was watching. They're here with me virtually. I wish they were here in real life, but that's okay. This has been a dream of yours and your family for such a long time, and it's been a tough couple of years. What are the emotions wrapped around that gold medal? It just feels so surreal. Like, it doesn't even feel like real life. Like, I'm an Olympic gold champion. Like, it just doesn't make sense, but I'm super excited. I'm so proud of myself. I've been working towards this my whole life, and it just T feels amazing. Tight competition came down to that final rotation. You got off the floor. You looked a little bit concerned. Yeah. <laughs> 
the moment you found out that you had done enough, can you tell us what was going through your mind? Um, well, I knew the floor routine was going to be better if I just took out the last pass. So I just kind of like was hoping. I missed my turn, so I was kind of worried. But as soon as I saw my score come up, I knew that I was like in the top. And I was just, it just was a crazy moment. I just started crying with my coach. We've both worked towards this, and it's been our goal. We've talked so much about your family and how close you all are, especially your relationship with your dad. How much has he inspired you with his fight? He's inspired me throughout everything. He is my biggest supporter, and I definitely would not be here without him. His whole injury and just the whole story just inspires me every single day to be better because he's going through something that's way worse than what I'm going through. But my whole family has been my biggest supporters, and I love you guys all. So you're not done yet. You still have a couple of event finals to come. But how do you celebrate this? Um, I don't even know. I'm going to go eat a pizza. Like, that's all I've been craving this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm really excited. And I just got to stay focused for bars and beam. All right. Congratulations and best of luck along the way. Thank you. All right, Andrea, thanks. Pizza's on you tonight, by the way. Uh, Tim, Nastia, let me ask you what you make of what you saw tonight. Nastia, you know what it's like, the journey and then that realization of the dream. Can you take us there at all? It's really hard to take you there because it is so surreal, and, and she's not really going to even believe it for, I think, a few days, a few weeks, a few months, but she did exactly what she needed to do. She stepped up to the plate, and she had one of the best meets of her entire life. SUNY, your life will be changed forever. And, Tim, it's not just tonight, but it's what you've been through to get here. Oh, absolutely. Every single kid that starts out in the sport of gymnastics, they dream about going to the Olympic Games. And the pinnacle is always, especially from the beginning, it's the all-around. Now, bars is critical for SUNY. She could win another gold medal there. But she proved tonight, showed the world, that she is an all-around champion. And in the end, after all that's taken place, it is an American that will step up to the top step of the podium in the all-around at the Olympics. SUNY Lee... Your life has just changed.